Education. I did my master in science and later a PhD at the university. And I really don't think it was a surprise to anyone that I, 22 years later, in 1994, started this chemistry company, Litas. Um, so we have been in operation for 25 years now. And our company is a spin off from the medical faculty at the University of Oslo. And we operate as a contract lab, um, an analytical uh, GMT certified uh, contract lab. And we serve uh, academia, biotech, pharma, food and nutrient producers, hospitals, healthcare institutions, and a number of startups throughout the world. I like to say that we are 46 workers in this company, where currently 18 are humans and 28 are robots or machines. So we are located here um, in Oslo Innovation Center. We have the entire top floor now uh, in this building, 750 square meters. This is how it looks inside. And uh, these are some pictures from our, our offices and labs. And you can see that the labs are fully packed with advanced analytical instrumentation. So we do contract research for industry and academia. Uh, but most importantly for you guys, we run a fully automated high throughput drive lot service located in Oslo. So we have a number of quite well known customers, some of them are listed here, uh, but one of the largest and of course the most important one is you guys. So, now I will switch to talk about the methods that we use to analyze the samples that you send us. So the classical way of collecting a blood sample for biomarker analysis is to stick a big needle into your arm, draw like 5-10 milliliters of blood in multiple vials, and when you centrifuge these vials, you will have a red bottom layer and an upper yellow layer, and this yellow layer is called blood plasma. And this is what your doctor usually would use for such an analysis. Cincino, on the other hand, uses a totally different sample. In this case, there is no big needle, just a tiny drop of blood, drift on a paper, dried and sent in the mail to our lab for analysis. And the reason that this uh, blood is red is, that it, it, it is because it contains red blood cells, looking like this. And red blood cells are red because they contain iron. And this iron will carry oxygen from your lungs to the different organs of your body, including your brain. So these are really, really important um, uh, cells. And these cells, they actually make up more than 25% of all the cells in your body. And they are born in the core of your bones, in the bone marrow. And when they are born there, they are loaded with fatty acids. The fatty acids that you've been eating are exactly that day. And actually they carry these fatty acids their entire life. So there is no exchange. And they live for about 120 days. And believe it or not, every second, more than 2 million new red blood cells are born and die. <coughs> so, when you analyze this yellow blood plasma for fatty acids, you will have a picture of what kind of lipids, fatty acids, you've been eating the last seven days only. But if you use the red blood, including the red blood cells, as in dry blood spots, you will actually have a 120 day history of what kind of lipids, fatty acids, that have been traveling throughout your body. So this is the reason why the dry blood spots are the superior sample type for this type of fatty acid analysis. Mm. 
So when we receive this um, dry blood spots in our lab, we do some sampling. These are the white circles on the red dot here. And we extract all the molecules in this sample. And it's a lot of molecules. Actually, it's more than 20,000 different molecules in this sample, this tiny sample. Some of them are in really low concentrations and some in high concentrations. So this is a very complex task, you know, to, to measure actually specific fatty acids in this com complex mixture. So we use a technique called chromatography. And this is the final result from such an uh, analysis. You will see that there are some peaks, some blue peaks, some are large, some are small, and these represent the different fatty acids in your blood. So in the next few slides, I will actually try to attempt to uh, explain to you this very complex technique and so you really understand it. So we extract these 20,000 molecules into a small vial in a liquid. And this is like taking a big box of Lego and pouring it out on the floor, right? So it's a lot of different pieces, colors, sizes and so on, and these represent the lipids, the fatty acids. And our task is then to measure, to count one or two specific Lego types. So we need to simplify, right? We need to clean this up. So we start, start to pull out the different Lego pieces with the same color, same size. We put them on top of each other like this. Yeah? So the ones uh, that has high numbers will form high stacks and the ones that are very few will form low stacks. Okay? So it looks like this or like this. Yeah? So if I now superimpose this stack of Legos on top of the chrom chromatogram I showed you, you will see that it looks quite similar, right? So this is what chromatography is about. It's to simplify, to sort, and put on top of each other the different fatty acids. So actually chromatography is a Greek word, and it means writing in colors. So it kind of makes sense, right? So if I magnify a, a portion of this chromatogram, you will see that we have two important peaks. So this is the arachidonic acid, the omega-6 fatty acids, and then we have a smaller peak there which is the EPA, of the most important omega-3 fatty acids. So when we calculate the omega-6-3 ratio, the ARA EPA ratio, we actually look at the different sizes between these two peaks. So we'll see that the, the omega-6 peak is about five times higher than the EPA peak. So the ratio is five to one. It's very simple. So if you look at the same index, uh, now for two different sample types, the one to the left has a lot of blood, one to the right has less blood. So the sample with a lot of blood will give high peaks, and the one with small amounts of blood will give small peaks. Mm. But look at the ratio, it's the same, right? So it doesn't really matter how much blood it is, the ratio will be the same anyway. So this is a very nice feature of this analysis and makes the analysis very robust. To look at another fatty acid, the DHA, very important omega-3 fatty acid, and a number of different sample types. We have small samples, big samples, very overloaded samples, and we also have a paper with no blood at all. So you see the blue bars, they indicate that uh, the results are quite similar. Uh, except for the card with no blood, there is no signal, right? So this card, we did something special. We actually touched the paper with our fingers in the middle of the circles. So still no results, so there is no omega-3 in the paper, but also not on our fingertips. But if you look at the different type of fatty acids, a much more common fatty acid that you can find in almost any type of lipid, and cream, butter, food fat, and so on, also on our fingers, you will see that for the card with no blood, we actually have higher results than we have in the blood samples. So this is my first take, take home message to you. Never, never touch the paper when you do the blood sample, because this will uh, contaminate the paper and give wrong results. So, of course, hand cream. I mean, hand cream is lipids. So if you use hand cream and touch the paper, it will be very, very bad. And also, even though you don't touch the paper, when the blood is kind of raining down your finger, it will be contaminated with lipids, fatty acids. So the answer will be wrong, right? So no hand cream. And please make sure to wash your hands properly with warm water <coughs> and soap and rinse very, very well. So, I said that the amount of blood doesn't really matter, but that's not totally true. Of course, we need some blood, and there is a minimal amount of blood that we need for the analysis. 
These are pictures of some samples that you send, send us. So you can see on the left side in the green bracket, you can see there are samples with a decent <laughs> amount of blood. And on the right side with the red bracket, you can see there are samples with hardly any blood at all. So this is the second uh, take home message to you. Please make sure that there is blood on the card when you send them in, right? Uh, and there's no really, we have a lot of blood, we have like five meters, so you can actually offer a couple of drops on the paper before you send it off. <laughs> so I have listed the, the important features here. So wash your hands, rinse well. You, you, you should clean your finger with the alcohol swab. But please make sure that the alcohol actually evaporates before you do the sampling. Like you no know, wet alcohol on the blood, right? Um, there is really no way you need to, uh, to wipe off the first drop. Instead you should, um, uh, and you shouldn't touch the, the paper with your fingers, but instead you should have a large hanging drop of blood and let it fall onto the paper, or just touch the paper with the blood drop. Um, you need to dry the sample for at least 10 minutes before you put it into the alumina envelope. And close the envelope, that's a good thing, and inside the envelope there is a drying medium, don't take it out, okay? And it's nice if you send the sample the same day. If you don't have time to do this, you can store it in the fridge for the next day. So, how do we secure the quality of the analysis? I know a lot of you are concerned about this. So for this, we use something called quality control samples. And a quality control sample is a dry blood spot sample. We take like a liter of blood, we mix it well, and we prepare thousands of dry blood spots. We dry them, we put them in the freezer, and every day when we do this in Sino samples, we have some of these QC samples before your samples and after your samples. So these samples are identical, and so the results should be the same, right? So before we can release the results online, we need to have these quality control samples approved. So we put the results into what we call a quality control plot, the red line here. And you can see these are many, many hundred of QC samples uh, run around the Cincino samples. And there's a natural sound uh, behavior um, going a little bit up and down, but no trends up, no trends down. Except for the end there, you can see that we have two spikes. And this is not good. And when we see something like this, we need to check the calculation, the integration. And if we do find an error, we can correct them and we can release the results online. But if you don't find an error, you need to do a reanalysis, And this is why you need to provide two samples with blood, uh, not only one. So we can use the second sample for a second analysis and release this result online. So you also see that in the middle there I have uh, a blue mark uh, indicating the difference between uh, the highest result and the lowest result. And this is the precision of the method, the variance, the coefficient of variance or the CV percentage. So the precision, in addition to accuracy, is the two main uh, quality features of any analytical method. So I will attempt to explain this in this slide. We have three examples. To the left, you will see that we have three measurements. They are all very similar, so the precision is good, a low CV. They are also in the middle, so the accuracy is also good. So good precision, good accuracy. So in the, in the middle example, we have three measurements. They are very similar, so the precision is good. They are not in the middle, so the accuracy is not that good. So in the last example to the right, you can see that we have three measurements. They are not very similar, so the precision is bad. Uh, but actually, the average of these three measurements will be in the middle, so the accuracy is good. Right? So in this table, I have listed the, the, the performance of this fatty acid dry blood spot method. So this data set is based on more than 8,200 QC samples, bracketing more than 100,000 Cincino samples. So it's a very large data set. Uh, and I listed the accuracy and the precision for the, main, the four main fatty acids, in addition to the omega-3 index and the ARA EPA ratio. So the accuracy is perfect when it's 100. And you can see these numbers are really close to 100. Uh, so the accuracy is good and the precision uh, should, the number should be as low as possible, uh, preferably below 10%, and all of these numbers are below 5%, so the precision is also very good. 
Yeah, so you know, you guys send us a lot of samples. Mm -hmm. huh? So this is like one day cash for us. Big box, stamps from all over the world. Mm. Um, and do you know that we donate these stamps to an uh, organization called Turkfrib? So this is for the support of tuberculosis. <laughs> this is your achievement. And actually last year it was more than 100,000 Norwegian ground receiving stamps. So this is a big, big support. And every day we get several hundred, sometimes even more than a thousand envelopes with samples. We like to refer to them as love letters from the Sincina crowd. <laughs> you, right? yeah. And in total, you have sampled, collected, and sent for analysis more than 250,000 samples. Yeah. I think I'm quite sure that this is the largest database in the world on fatty acids. And, um, and I see increasing every year. So to be able to, uh, to manage this increase in uh, samples, there will be a few changes to, to, the, to the kits that you will be using. So after summer, there will be new kits. Um, they will have a different drying medium. It will allow you to put the sample wet into the alumina envelope. Uh, that's a good thing. Um, and the DPS card will be different, looking like on the left side here. And the reason we have this card is because it's compatible with a uh, robotic system that we use in our lab. So it will be totally automated. Uh, and this system, they produce these small vials with a paper punch with a small amount of blood on it. And then we add the chemicals to the chemistry, and these vials are lifted onto the chromatographic system doing the final analysis. So at the very end now, I will let you on in on a secret. I personally have a dream. I have a dream that we, in the near future, will reach one million samples. <laughs>